Hello there, this is KL7L WE2XPQ and there's my GPS receiver, little blips and stuff. And anyway, that's a Hans Summers GPS kit, very, very sensitive, sitting in the uh, uh, by the window there. And that's driving this uh, QRP Labs Ultimate 3S at the moment. We're transmitting on uh, the new 630 meter band, uh, 475 kilohertz on WSPR2, Whisper 2 and uh, we're actually doing some testing at the moment and uh, this uh, uh, kit is uh, pretty good value and we've got a single filter in there and it's transmitting away um, it runs about 150 milliwatts and that drives uh, the uh, the W1 VDPA up here and this is uh, receiving power from this HP power supply at the moment we are running uh, about 30 volts on the PA and we're driving, uh, taking about uh, uh, seven or eight amps, so about 240 watts uh, input. And if we look on the power meter here, we're running 200 watts output, so very, very efficient, and things don't get too hot. So it works something like this. The uh, QRP Labs uh, produces the low-level signal, drives a big pair of FETs, which... Uh, is W1VD's design with all the mods. We've got uh, the HT supply coming in here, something between 12 and uh, 50 volts, uh, 14 volts coming in here for the low level circuits. This is from the U3S, and the output comes from here, and that goes into this filter, uh, which is a one kilowatt, again, W1VD design, all available on his website and then into a phase meter and this meter what this does it measures uh, this meter here shows the relatively phase to see if we're actually in resonance and if it's sitting in the middle as like it is at the moment it means that the antenna is resonant and this meter here you can switch between voltage and current and it's actually measuring uh, the impedance of 50 ohms and if we flick between voltage and current hopefully the meter doesn't move very much not a lot so we're actually matched very very well and uh, the uh, so we keep an eye on the resonance of the uh, the antenna and also to make sure the impedance uh, which will change with the weather and uh, winds and stuff uh, on the power meter side we've got 1000 P insert which uh, covers uh, from 0.45 to 2.5 megahertz and that's about a hundred bucks worth but well worth it so this meter will read from uh, zero to uh, to one kilowatt you can see we're running 200 watts output uh, one of the things about the uh, the PA is that it it's actually very very efficient you can see we're running uh, 240 in about uh, 200 out which means there shouldn't be a lot of heating on here so if I use my infrared uh, device here. I'm expecting the temperature of the heat sink to be about 105, 106 degrees at the maximum, depending on where you're, you're pointing it. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. So not a lot of dissipation in this uh, class uh, D stroke E PA. In fact, everything else is pretty hot in here already. It's around about uh, uh, 80 or 90 degrees in here. You can see the LPF, which is uh, taking all the nasty harmonics, is actually running cool as well. Everything's running pretty cool. Even the PA is uh, not uh, not hot to the touch. In fact, it just feels warm to the touch. Anyway, so this is uh, for the station, and the output uh, is uh, I'm using uh, it's about 280 feet of this uh, LMR 400, and that goes to a Marconi with a variometer. Uh, and uh, top loading, about 200 feet of top loading, and uh, we can tune the uh, the variometer from here by uh, uh, moving this toggle switch either one way or the other, which drives the motor uh, down at the uh, the antenna base, and we can actually see the uh, the relatively the resonance changing. So we, we we tweak this to get the phase exactly on the nose, and that will vary depending if the wind's blowing around and stuff. Anyway, the station is back on the air. We did have a number of faults over the last uh, period, but I'm glad to say that uh, 475 is up 
now I've got to work on the uh, the 137 kilohertz uh, uh, system. This is the, uh, the the voltage supply. It's an old Telco Lorraine uh, switch mode power supply. It runs uh, up to 60 volts at uh, 20 amps, and that drives uh, voltage-wise uh, this Decca 5501. It's got three PA modules, each with 400 watts, which you can switch in and out. And again, I will drive that with another Hans uh, Summers QRP3 Labs uh, uh, QRP3 Labs uh, transmitter here. And again, I can switch the modes if I want to. I, I also can drive this system through uh, transverters and sources uh, with the TS850, which is very, very good on the LF and MF. Uh, and the, or the TS870 sitting at the end there. The S870 is a bit deafer, uh, but still one of the best receivers as far as stability is concerned. Anyway, so we're back up and running. Things are running nice and cool, as is the weather here in Alaska, looking very autumnal out there. So, greetings. And uh, this is WE2XPQ, part five for the moment, on uh, 630 meters. A new handband starting off, so go up to the UTC site and register your station and uh, 30 days and you should get on the air if uh, the UTC doesn't have any uh, negative comments about your location being within one kilometre of a, an active power line using the same frequency or overlapping frequencies that they're using. But if you register your station it, uh, and there's nothing nearby, it also protects you from future operation by the telcos and pipeline communications and overhead powers and stuff like that. So seven threes and uh, greetings from Alaska. This is KL7L WE2XPQ.